Thank you, Spencer. It's now nine minutes after the hour. Sir Jeffrey Howe is the British Foreign Minister, equivalent to the American Secretary of State, and he is one of the highest ranking members of Margaret Thatcher's government. That government, of course, won a smashing victory last night, and I talked with Sir Jeffrey Howe this morning and asked him if that victory wasn't even larger than he anticipated. Yes, I think so. The second largest majority since the war. Very good. Why? Because I think the, part of the British people recognize that we've done well for Britain's economy, Britain's standing in the world, and they remain profoundly anxious, repelled by the policies of the, the, policies of the opposition. Do we see a different, do you think, Margaret Thatcher in any way, given the fact that she's now won three terms, one bigger this time than expected? Does she change in any way? Uh, I don't think she's a lady who's easy to change a great deal. Margaret Thatcher will still be Margaret Thatcher. I think we shall all be returning to office with renewed confidence and perhaps a renewed determination to deal with those areas that we still haven't done as much for as we'd like. Did it surprise you that, you, that the party won as big as it did? I think I always thought we were going to win. I'm always rather a cautious character, and as the polls began to veer around, I just settled for 40, 50, 60, 100 is fine. So you were surprised then a little bit? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, it over, overcoming your natural caution, I mean, you really didn't think, think you'd get most that Most people big. were, and I must say that certainly most of the pundits in the media uh, were predicting a much closer result, but then that's fun for them. We've deprived them of their fun. <laughs> what repercussions, somebody in the United States looking at that, at this, must wonder, what repercussions for the states? Well, I think the most important thing is the absence of the repercussions of the opposite. Had there been a Labour victory, it would have posed an enormous threat to the coherence of the NATO alliance. It would have represented a reverse for the economic policies that have really become, come to dominate uh, economic policy making around the world over the last eight years. It would have put Britain back on a track into the economic wilderness. And that would have been a very bad signal for those countries around the world that are basically following our economic prescription. So the good thing is that the right policies, which have been prevailing around the world, are still on track. And you left out a mention of how that would have changed Britain's nuclear policy as well. Well, I, I meant that clearly, obviously, because it would have meant an abandonment of not only of our nuclear deterrent, but it would have meant the eviction of United States nuclear bases as well. It is that that would have driven a coach and horses through the NATO alliance with, I think, very, very wide-reaching results. It's interesting the parallels in the British elections and the American elections. 1979, a conservative, Margaret Thatcher, wins. A year later, a conservative, Ronald Reagan, wins in the United States. 1983, she wins a landslide victory in Britain. 1984, Ronald Reagan wins a landslide victory in the United States. Now, will the parallel hold? 1987, conservatives wins again. How will the conservatives do in America in 1988? Do you think there's a conservative movement generally in, the, in our two nations? I think not just in our two nations. If you recognize what happened in France, for an, a different example, where they elected a socialist president when President Mitterrand was elected, but have in fact uh, matched him by electing a conservative government under Mr. Chirac alongside him. Uh, the policies have all been shifting towards the center-right in almost every country around the world. Because socialism has been seen to have failed. It's not working in, in China or the Soviet Union or Vietnam or any other places. I think that the economic sanity uh, is prevailing and is leading political sanity uh, in most places around the world. It can't go on without interruption somewhere around the world, but basically the trend's in the right direction. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you as we close about Iran. You just come back from the summit. The British are kicking out Iranian diplomats. The Iranians are kicking out the British. And there's great discussion about U.S. actions in the Persian Gulf. Do you think there is a threat or should we should be concerned about a war in the Persian Gulf? Well, there is already a war going on between Iran and Iraq, and that obviously... I mean with the West. Yes. I think we ought not to think in those terms. We're obviously concerned to maintain freedom of navigation in the Gulf, to try and reduce tension, to bring an end to the Iran-Iraq war. That's what the message from the summit was. So we have to be vigilant, but trying to push the thing in the direction of peace. Should people, people be concerned, though, about the possibility of this breaking out into... Oh, one must be concerned about it, because in course of the Iran-Iraq conflict, Hundreds of vessels of neutral countries have been damaged and attacked. The Royal Navy plays a very important part through our, our Miller patrol in ensuring the safe passage of British ships going out there. So does the United States Navy and the French Navy. We've got to be concerned in that kind of way and keep on shoving, as I say, to try and bring the warring parties to a conclusion, to a peaceful conclusion.
And it's now 14 minutes after the hour. We'll be back with His Royal Highness Prince Edward, the Queen's son, after this.